If you are a Lord of the Rings fan and want to talk about scenes within each film that mean a lot to you, let me know. In the extended edition reviews, I will be showcasing you and the love you have for these movies. You can talk about the extended scenes or regular theatrical editions. For further details, DM it on Twitter. Eh, I still got time. Hi, Doc! What? <laughs> Whoa, ah! What? What? You, you scared me. You scared me? What are you doing here? Oh, well, I got your call to action, so I, here I am. Uh, oh boy. Whoa, what are you saying that for? I don't explain this. I... I decided to go in a different direction. Well, why? Mm -hmm. No one reached out and wanted to be a part of the review? Oh. Well, I'm here now. Uh, but just a wee bit late. But I'm here now, Doug. Okay. I'm here... now! Okay. Yeah, I got everything set up. I got my script here. I pre-recorded. I got everything set up. I even have uh, autographs, uh, posters, action figures. I don't know where they are, but I got everything here ready. Can you show me what you got then? Yeah, sure. I'll give it to you right over these messages. I hope this is worth it. Well, Doug, my favorite part of the film is the soundtrack. And especially when they're riding and they're charging and you hear the chorus in the background and you hear the lady go, Welcome everyone to Cinema Spotlight. Diving into Peter Jackson's career, we will be talking about The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. Da, da, da. Is that mine? Here we are everyone, the final chapter of Lord of the Rings, and my review is finally here. After this, there will be my extended review, and that'll be it for a while. Time to do reviews have been difficult. I just hope that you all enjoy the reviews I have done so far. But, with that said, let's talk about the final installment of this amazing trilogy. Return of the King is about our beloved hobbit Frodo and his journey to Mount Doom, with the help of his friend Sam and guide Smeagol, who plots to kill them and take the One Ring for himself. All while, Aragorn and company seek to thwart the enemy Sauron from bringing down Minas Tirith, the City of Kings. Knowing Aragorn is the heir to the throne, this is a real threat to Sauron, whilst he is still unaware of Frodo's position. Everyone will do what they can to make sure that Sauron is vanquished once and for all. Down with the bloody big eye! You know what? <clears throat> it's the sword you gave me, and I just thwarted a bigger sword. <laughs> This isn't a measuring contest. This is one hell of a film, where my last two reviews took a while to explain aspects of the plot and talk about the world building and the characters. Everything you know has been set up. Everything will start to come to a close, whether by death of characters, growth of characters, conclusions of elements, and closure of story arcs. This is one of the times where a third part in a trilogy is so satisfying that it almost overstays its welcome. We pick up where Towers left off, with 
some characters reuniting, such as Gandalf, Aragorn, Gimli, and Legolas, finding Merry and Pippin. Frodo and Sam's friendship becomes more strained due to Gollum's antics, with some spoilers that I need to get into, but don't worry, I won't go into too many. No spoilers! Ow! <laughs> <laughs> the story arcs are strong here, and while I was watching one side to the story, I almost didn't want to leave it to go to the other. Take Aragorn, for example. He's gone from the reluctant hero, but not so far away from helping others, to becoming the man he's born to be and rising to achieve what the world needs. What you also need is an awesome thumbnail. So you can be enticed to wonder if I'm actually doing another skit or not. All right, gentlemen, I want you to repeat after me just how I do it. Ready? Your turn. Very good. Legolas and Gimli, for another, were two polar opposite in race and lifestyle that came together for a common cause. Where there might be not a whole lot of character development, there is really a true sense of coming together of two different species for a common cause that result in some hilarious and heartwarming effect. Still only counts as one. Still only counts as one! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's the third review. You're going to get like twice as much of everything from her. She lost her sword. Sorry, privileges! <laughs> we need to talk about the battles in this film. I just... Okay. This is where I'm going to gush a little too much, but you know what? It is the third review, and it's my final review, so you leave me be. The Siege of Minas Tirith happens right in the middle of the film, with another battle later to happen. So you essentially have two battles in this film. Talk about exhausting. I can't go on anymore. How is the Siege of Minas Tirith? Is it a little more lackluster than the first battle? Does it try too hard? Is there too much going on, and is there kind of like that feeling, is it there just for the sake of action? To answer that... It's two words. Hell no. The Siege of Minas Tirith is one of my favorite battle sieges of a city by far. Sauron needs this to succeed so he can return to form and take over Middle Earth. He goes all out to assure his true ascension. The moment that Gandalf rides up those stairs and says, Send these foul beasts into the abyss, the battle does not let up. Just the pure chaos of it sends shivers down my spine. There are a lot of great moments of this battle leading into the final conflicts that are just truly breathtaking. So while everyone is dealing with the siege of Minas Tirith, poor Frodo is dealing with a big problem of his own. Smeagol, shall we say Gollum, has led Frodo and Sam to a place known as the Morgul Vale, a very steep set of stairs leading up a mountain that leads into a cave hiding a very sinister being. A fair warning to those who haven't seen Lord of the Rings, and then also have a fear of spiders. Um, if you have given this trilogy a chance and have reached this point of the films, and you have said fear of spiders, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Deeply. Sorry. We've been trying to reach you of your cause extended warranty. Get out of my house! Yeah, anyway, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. I do feel like talking about the ending is important. Return of the King is infamously known for its multiple endings. Or as Randall put, puts it in Clerks 2, if Peter Jackson wanted to blow me away with those Ring movies, he would have ended it with a logical closure point. Not with the 29 endings that followed. It wasn't 29, it was 5. I'm glad you kept count. It just needs that extra level of treatment. I never felt like this was unnecessary. Was it a lot? Yes. To me, it was highly satisfying. Return of the King is a truly epic conclusion of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Highly satisfying, emotionally resonating, and bittersweet in some areas. Very little lackluster character beats, and overall a massive achievement in filmmaking. For that, I loved Return of the King, and give it God tier, and would love to own it on 4K. <laughs> just remember something. I am no man. And you're going to stab me right in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much for being a part of my Lord of the Rings reviews. I have one more for you. As I said beforehand, I'll be talking about my extended review of Return of the King here soon. If you've seen Return of the King, let me know down in the comments. Be kind, be reasonable, and let's talk. Like, share, and sub, and I will see you guys next time.